Wonder Woman is arguably the most well-known female superhero on Earth. She sold millions of comics, appeared in movies, TV shows, video games, and even spawned her own lamp. I love lamp. I love lamp. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Total Nerd channel, leave a comment, and let us know what Total Nerd topics you would like to see us explain next. And with that, let's do it! Born in Bethel, Connecticut on May 9, 1892, William Moulton Marsden grew up to become one of the more eclectic polymaths of mid-century America. The psychologist by day, who is widely credited with the creation of the lie detector test, also wrote numerous self-help books. And, as if that wasn't enough, he graduated from Harvard with three degrees! Oh yeah, and, and he created Wonder Woman. Throughout his life, Marsden was a staunch defender of comics as a medium. In an article published in the Family Circle titled Don't Laugh at Comics, he extolled the virtues and educational potential of the medium. This expose would catch the attention of Max Gaines, who would hire Marsden to be an educational consultant for all American publications, which would later merge with national periodicals and become DC Comics. After working as a consultant for a period of time, Marsden pitched the idea of a female superhero to Jack Leibowitz the notoriously shady DC accountant, and Max Gaines. They liked the idea, and Marston began to develop the idea further. Marston's wife, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, and their live-in secretary-slash-lover, Olive Byrne, were both very influential in the creation of Wonder Woman. I know what you're thinking. Did he just say live-in secretary-slash-lover? Yeah, I did. The Marsdens held a polyamorous household. I believe the kids would refer to it as a thruple. Marston was interested in the highly taboo sexual territories of BDSM and kink play in the 1930s, which, if these things are looked on as risque now, imagine how they were 90 years ago. Marston even went so far as to write a book titled Emotions of Normal People, in which he detailed how it is completely natural and healthy to explore one's sexuality and sexual desires. Furthermore, Marston's a staunch believer in what he referred to as female supremacy, meaning that he thought women should be the ones in power in society. Both of these concepts would be on display in Marston's Wonder Woman comics. Marston repeatedly said, Wonder Woman is the propaganda that women in the world need. Marston published a strip under a pseudonym, taking the name Charles Moulton, because he thought that his avant-garde academic research would in some way interfere with the character's reception by the wider public. Marston's idea for the boundaries of which Wonder Woman could not stray outside of were very strict, meaning the initial Wonder Woman comics feature either her being tied up or her tying up other people, but never actually hurting anyone. Marston's idea was that Diana would never be using the lasso of truth to inflict harm or engage in unwilling kink play. It's more to show love through binding, whereas other characters at this time, like the Spider or the Phantom, would just shoot their antagonists, Wonder Woman would bind them up, allowing them time to see the error of their deeds. Every aspect of Diana's character was thought out and deliberately placed there. Her tiara as a symbol of nobility and the regality of women, the bracelets to symbolize the fact that she was once under man's rule and that she would no longer kneel to their oppression and in fact, she would use that experience as a means to protect herself, i.e. deflecting bullets, ay, ay, ay. Interestingly, both of these aspects were also inspired by Olive Byrne, Marston's lover and previously mentioned live-in secretary. She was said to wear tiaras as a fashion statement and large chunky bracelets regularly. Most people aren't aware of the fact that Wonder Woman has a lineage that's so closely related to BDSM. However, that's largely because comics have been relegated to a second-class art form. In the 1950s, a psychologist named Frederick Wortham wrote a book titled Seduction of the Innocent. In it, he blamed many of society's ills on the comics medium. Think video games in the 1990s or Dungeons and Dragons in the 80s, which would make Wortham a Germanic Tipper Gore? This became such a hot button issue that there were HUAC trials held to establish if these dangerous aspects of the comics publishing community were actually being nurtured or if publishers were taking the proper steps to protect children. In these hearings, William Gaines, the son of the previously mentioned Gaines, was the sole defender of the comics medium. Every other publisher didn't have the gall to stand up for free speech. However, Bill Gaines was a speed addict at the time, and his testimony was wild and erratic to say the least. It would be just as difficult to explain the harmless thrill of a horror story to a Dr. Wortham 
as it would be to explain the sublimity of love to a frigid old maid. Over the course of the hearings, examples of Batman and Robin living together were used to try and infer that homosexuality was rampant in comics and that it was setting a negative example for children. EC comics were used as examples of hyperviolence and poor taste, and you guessed it, Wonder Woman, she was used to... Yeah. Needless to say, the cowardly publishers of the day relented and agreed to work together to form a censorship organization. And this is how the Comics Code Authority was born. You know that weird little square that's in all those covers of those comics that you used to read? The thing that people wear on t-shirts nostalgically at conventions? That thing that opened up the Spider-Verse? Yeah, it was a badge that signified that the book had been vetted and didn't have anything objectionable contained within. And it put just about every publisher out of business. It strangled the marketplace and almost permanently cemented the false idea that comics were for children into the American subconscious. It drives me crazy how prevalent this thing still is. Like, oh look, I'm wearing a pin that says the Comics Code Authority on my jacket because I used to read comics and they had that thing on them. No, just no. That's an awful setback for the medium and a horrible bludgeon to artistic expression. It was a censorship organization. It's awful. Like everyone just remembers, oh, this is the thing that was on the comics I used to read. Oh, it's so great, it's so great. No, it was an awful censorship organization that withheld the medium from maintaining mainstream status. It f***ed over a generation of creators and generally made everything worse. But you know, that's comics in a nutshell, right? Surprisingly, William Moulton Marsden was only involved with Wonder Woman from 1941 through 1945. Wonder Woman's first appearance was in a backup comic for All-Star Comics number 8. The story was drawn by Harry G. Peter. She quickly then appeared in Sensation Comics number 1, which is often referred to as her actual first appearance. Harry G. Peter, for all intents and purposes, is Wonder Woman's co-creator. However, he's not nearly as recognized. Not only did he draw many of her initial appearances, but he also drew the entirety of her 1944 newspaper strip, along with every cover to her comic book series from 1941 to 1949. Peter is almost solely responsible for Wonder Woman's visual aesthetic too. Yes, the bracelets were inspired by Olive and so on, and yes, the tiara, blah blah blah. But as far as the initial instructions given to Harry G. Peter to like establish everything, Marston literally said, draw a woman that's as powerful as Superman, as sexy as Miss Fury, and as scantily clad as Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. And that's, that's it! Marston didn't even have any specific changes for Peter after he received the initial designs, other than he wanted different shoes on Diana. Many writers and artists have come after Marston's time on the book, but he's arguably still the only person that's identified with her. Why is this? It's a combination of things. Marston is a larger-than-life character who lived a wildly colorful existence, even by today's standards. It makes a clearer and crisper narrative if you're able to turn to somebody at a cocktail party and be like, hey, did you know that Wonder Woman's crater was a swinger? Obviously, Marston's kinky bondage interest isn't something that really spilled over into the DCU. The modern version of Wonder Woman is so, well, actually, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, legions of creators have taken Marston's kink and disseminated it into the world. I know what you're thinking. Oh, but it's just the comics. She'd never be tied up in one of the movies or the TV shows. And now we will all learn the truth. Then why don't you ask her about this? Really? This BDSM imagery is in nearly every version of Wonder Woman. It's hard to really nail down if it's purposefully paying homage, or if it's just the lineage of the character, or if it's subconsciously, you know, tingling the mind muscles of the people behind the camera. Let's be real, Diana ends up being tied up with the lasso of truth just about as much as she ends up tying up other people. The fact that most of the people who have worked on these books over the decades are men is also a mitigating factor. However, it's so fascinating that this specific fetish that Marston established almost a hundred years ago echoes throughout just about every iteration of the character. It's fascinating. Marston passed away of cancer on May 2nd, 1947, just a week before his 54th birthday. Olive and Elizabeth lived together until 1985, when Olive died at 81 
Elizabeth died in 1993 at the age of 100 years old. Wonder Woman has gone on to become a global icon, a symbol for peace, tolerance, and empowerment, and has uplifted millions of people from every walk of life, and also probably titillated legions of people who were into being tied up, or whatever. Well, what do you think? Did Marston's progressive values help shift the cultural conversation during the 1950s? Are his beliefs, as they appear in the work, anything more than titillation? Have you ever tried to fight crime in heels in a tiara? That shit's probably super hard! If you like this video, please comment below and let us know what other area of nerd culture needs an explainer. And in the meantime, like, comment, and subscribe for more Total Nerd videos.